people are gonna be disappointed, but I bought off Shein again. Guys, I did it again. My Shein order is here. Oh yeah. Fashion, the outlet of creative freedom, the carrier of personal brand, the art of self-expression. It's always been changing, evolving, innovating. Trends have died and came back alive. Yet one thing seems to have gone in one direction. The obsession for a faster turnaround and the insatiable appetite for profit. Fashion has never been as cheap and accessible than ever. And now we're in a new era, real-time retail. Companies disrupting the status quo produce clothes in as little as three days. And this era's leader, well, it's a Chinese company called Xi'an. The products are updated much more frequently and at a higher volume than any other fast fashion brand. Xi'an's $100 billion value would top H&M and Zara combined. So I just got a package from Xi'an. Before we get into the video, this video is not to shame anybody who shops at Shein or anywhere else. I just want to open up the discussion about this brand which actually reached out to work with me. Upon more research, I was just blown away by all the questionable behind the scene things that Shein is associated with. I'm pretty sure they'll never want to work with me after this, but that's okay. Let's take a dive into Shein as a brand, how it's hurting the fashion industry, the environment, social media, and beyond, and how its impacts, along with many other brands, can be detrimentally irreversible. Let's dive in. Shein haul. I'm so excited. <gasps> what is Shein? Shein, an online-only retailer of inexpensive clothes, beauty, and lifestyle products, pumps out over 6,000 new items daily. As a reference, Zara releases 500 new items per week. Most of them are priced between $8 and $30. That's 30% to 50% lower than comparable pieces at Zara and H&M. I spend at Princess Polly, but only for four items but here I got like 20 something. Last year, it overtook Amazon to become the most downloaded shopping app in the US. According to its own website, Shein is a global fashion lifestyle e-retailer committed to making the beauty of fashion accessible to all. We use on-demand manufacturing technology to connect suppliers to our agile supply chain, reducing inventory waste, and enabling us to deliver a variety of affordable products to consumers around the world. Okay, sounds pretty fair. Shein benefited from changes in consumer behavior in the early pandemics as shoppers made ever more of their purchases online. Sales at Shein more than tripled in 2020 to $10 billion, making it the biggest web-only fashion brand in the world. Shein even worked with celebrities like Lil Nas and Katy Perry to boost its profile across Gen Z shoppers outside of China. According to Bloomberg News, Xi'an is in the talks with potential investors, including General Atlantic, for a funding round that could value the company at about $100 billion. This will make Xi'an the world's most valuable startup after ByteDance and SpaceX, according to data provider CB Insights. Obviously, as a business that is still young, I'd say Xi'an is truly impressive and successful. But if we dive a little deeper, we'd be able to see that the massive scale and success came from a lot of compromises, a lot of problematic compromises. She in a lot of problems. Then I got this shirt. Then I got this top. I love. Then I got this top. I love this top. Then I got this top. This is so cute. Then I got this top. 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 Then I got this top, then I got this top, then I got this top, then I got this top. So cute. Design issues. Shein is known to have sold Muslim prayer mats as quote unquote frilled Greek carpets. And that's just the beginning of a series of Shein's problematic designs. Shein has been called out by many smaller and independent artists for stealing their designs, which is disappointing, but not surprising given that it's just beyond possible to pump out thousands of new designs every single day, especially given that they're notoriously known for, well, 
being not the best places to work for, which I'll go over in a second. And this doesn't just apply to boutique designers. Levi's and Dr. Martens have also filed suit against Shein for copying their designs. And all of this, again, has to do with cutting down costs. In addition to cutting costs in designs, we also have the two largest areas in cost cutting. The production costs in terms of labor and materials. Labor issues. Although Shein proudly claims that they have over 10,000 employees worldwide and 58% are women, I think we all had the common expectation that Shein would not be named the top industry employer to work for. Because when they wanted to make fashion so on demand, you bet their supply chain is working itself to the extreme. And other than cutting costs by supplying with cheap materials, Shein has also been allegedly accused of poor labor protocols. Swiss researchers were able to track down 17 Shein partners in Guangzhou as they found some manufacturers were informal factories set up in residential buildings. At Shein's packing facility in the city of Washan. Workers claim they work 12 to 14 hour days and up to 28 days a month. Even though the Chinese labor law states work weeks cannot exceed 40 hours and overtime cannot exceed 36 hours per month. <laughs> and environmental issues. I did not know that I got that much stuff until I saw the box. You see, when you see it in your car, it looks smaller than when you get it in person. I'm sure you already guessed this, but to make a profit from such a low retail price, Shein does not joke around cutting costs. And when the material costs are low from production, the quality is guaranteed to not last much longer than a season or less, meaning a much higher waste to consumption. I am also speaking in the much broader sense, would it be possible that you find a piece of clothing you adore so much on Shein that you're able to wear it until the day you're able to pass it down to your grandkids? Absolutely. But is it likely? Um, arguable. Being cheap also means that many of Shein's pieces are made with synthetic fabrics like polyester and nylon. Unlike their short lifespans in our closets, clothing made from materials like such do not decay, which means that every piece of clothing we buy from Shein or a similar fashion brand will spend much more time in the landfill than they ever will spend in our wardrobe. Not to mention the impacts of chemicals from cheap dyes and so on. To worsen the impact, the rate by which an ultra-fast fashion item is sold is also on an alarming rise, thanks to the much disrupted trend cycle by brands like Shein. This is everything I ordered. Huge summer shine haul. She disrupted the trend cycle. I genuinely don't think you guys are ready. This isn't even half of the skirt. Golden Goose are a toss. These are a toss, toss, toss for me. I say cute, but only for like another year. The fashion industry was the first to use the term trend to refer to changes in the popularity of a certain style, silhouette, color, or item of clothing. The fashion trend cycle happens in five stages. Introduction, rise, acceptance, decline, and obsolescence. The introduction is when a new style enters the fashion world, usually from the runway, and is spotted in street style through a fashion blogger or influencer or the careful planning of a marketing agency. During the rise stage, more fashion influencers and trendsetters wear outfits that incorporate the garment or style. It officially becomes a quote-unquote trend, and more retailers begin to carry similar products in response to the increasing demand. In the acceptance stage, the trend moves away from the fashion circles to a mass-produced style that is available cheaply in several different outlets and e-commerce sites. The decline stage follows from the fall adoption by the mainstream. The style has lost its unique feel and sense of newness. This is when the style is no longer seen as aspirational. And the final stage is obsolescence, where the once trend is no longer considered to be fashion forward. It usually coincides with the introduction and rise of newer trends. The boom of fast fashion brands like Shein led to the emergence of microtrends, which are specific items that go in and out of style very quickly. It used to be three to five years, but now could be as short as a few months or even a few weeks. Ultra fast fashion no longer depends on runways, but instead focuses on what's on TikTok and Instagram. So once a trend becomes a trend on social media, it's basically reaching the end of its life cycle already and will likely be tossed or forgotten in the closet, with overconsumption coming at such a low cost and compiling waste becoming a huge issue. With Shein, 
if items do well with its trend-conscious customers. They simply order more from its suppliers. If not, they're discontinued. Shein has accelerated the test and repeat model, made famous by the likes of Zara and H&M. Only 6% of Shein's inventory remains in stock for more than 90 days. So all this talk doesn't mean it's a terrible idea to make fashion accessible and affordable. No, I don't think so. And I think fashion shouldn't be ranked according to the label or price tag. But I do think it's immensely crucial that as consumers and trend spreaders ourselves, A, we need to be more conscious of a brand's values. Doesn't mean we need to spend 50 hours researching every brand we purchase from, but just stay curious as to what they do to drive their profit. And B, when picking out our personal style, it doesn't matter if it's from Tom Ford or Shein, it doesn't matter if it was trending 50 years ago or five hours ago. My take is to ask myself one simple question. Would I be wearing this because I like it for how it is? Or am I drawn to wearing this because everybody else on TikTok is? And if I were to add this to my wardrobe, would it be a piece I'd love to wear again in the future? Because my closet is not huge and every piece of clothing, regardless of price, regardless of brand, needs to earn its right to enter. Honestly, much like people, quality in terms of how much you like it over quantity. So that's a quick dive into the Shein epidemic, leading to just the beginning of an overconsuming disaster. I am not as minimalist as I wish to be, and I'm certainly not in the right place to say that I've been 100% sustainably shopping since birth. But as a quick reminder, we as consumers hold more power to a trend or an industry than we think. So don't give up that power. Let me know your thoughts on fast fashion in terms of affordability versus sustainability in the comment section. I'd love to hear them. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram to join my growth journey. I'll see you next week. Bye. This is the end.